Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to say, Lieutenant Governor Robinson, I think your uh, testimony this morning was so compelling. And I wish uh, every American could see it. And we're going to clip that video. And I promise you, we'll get it out there. Because you're, you're sharing the truth. And, um, you know, we've just heard the last five minutes, uh, Reverend Barber has lamented today what he sees as the situation in, in North Carolina. And of course, uh, we all agree, it is a shame that Democrat controlled state governments established Jim Crow laws to prevent black Americans from voting and exercising other freedoms. But North Carolina is your state too, Lieutenant Governor Robinson, and you're the first black Lieutenant Governor in the history of the state. You're wildly popular there, and you all see why this morning, but I just wanna ask you for your perspective. Let me ask you, is there, is there rampant is voter there discrimination occurring around this country and or specifically in North Carolina? Is your microphone on? Make sure that button. There you go. There absolutely is not, and I'm confident in that. Um, you know, for me, this entire thing goes, again, back to this whole issue, and it always goes back to the issue. Whenever we talk about this issue, it always goes back to the ID issue. Having that ID to vote puts up that first firewall to create the integrity that we need for our elections. And... I, I just can't express, <laughs> let me even tell you a story. I'm a, I'm a father-in-law who was in prison for 43 years, a black man in prison for 43 years. Very first thing he did when he got out of prison was get a driver's license. Where is just no access to IDs that exist? Why do we look at poor people and brown people and think that they're less than and that they can't figure out how our systems work? They can't figure out where the DMV is. They can't figure out where this agency is to go down and get this ID that is being offered. I can't express to you how insulting this is. For someone to look at me and actually say that the reason why we need or don't need IDs to vote is because you and your people can't find your way down to get one. That there are restrictions somehow. The notion is absolutely asinine and ridiculous. And I would say absolutely unequivocally not. There are, there's no rampant uh, uh, discrimination against voters. There's none. There's, there, it doesn't exist. I mean, it, in some corners it might exist, sure. In some, some far off place, maybe once or twice somewhere, somebody might be in someone's mind. But a systematic, a systematic effort to suppress the votes of black people, that is preposterous. Just as preposterous as the notion that as a black American, I can't get a free ID to vote. Thank you for that clarity and conviction. Let me ask you another question. The election clause of the Constitution, federal Constitution, gives state legislatures the authority, as you know, to prescribe the times, places, and manner of holding elections within their jurisdictions. The Constitution thus leaves it to the states to administer elections within their boundaries. Let me ask you, from your perspective as a lieutenant governor, are states still best situated to determine how to run elections, or should we just federalize this whole thing and put Congress in charge? A absolutely. The state should remain in charge because from my vantage point, we're looking at a bill here that's 880 pages, some 880 pages uh, of a partisan, uh, unconstitutional power grab. You know, the federal government, there are a lot of things in here that they'll argue and say, oh, it's just, uh, it's just, we're just insinuating this. We understand how that works with the federal government. There's an insinu insinu insinuation, and then there's a request, and then there's a demand. We need to stop it at the insinuation. We need to stop this at the insinuation that somehow the people in Washington, D.C. know better than the people in North Carolina. You do not and we will not tolerate it. <laughs> Everybody over here is saying amen. This is some refreshing common sense, isn't it? Let me ask you one more question. We only have 40 seconds or so. When it comes to voting, do you believe we need to give citizens greater responsibility when exercising their right to vote? Absolutely. Again, I said I'm a huge proponent of the Second Amendment, but the very first thing with the Second Amendment is that ID that you show when you go to have that, uh, buy that firearm. But there's something I tell everybody before you partake of the Second Amendment, you need to take like, a look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I responsible enough to own a firearm? And if the answer is no, don't buy one. When it comes to voting, you have six, four years for president, six years for Senate, two years, two years for uh, House of Representatives. I have complete confidence in the people of the United States of America and the people of my state. 
that in those two, four, or six years, they can do due diligence, get that ID, find out where they're voting, make a date, and be there on the date. I have full and complete confidence in them that they can do that. And I think the rules should reflect that. Hallelujah, and thank you for being there. Here, I yield back. Thank you, Chairman Cohen and Ranking Member Johnson and all the members of the committee for allowing me to speak today. I'm honored to sit before this committee and testify before this body on such an important topic, a topic that hits close to home for me. You see, I'm the first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina, and I hail from Greensboro, home of the Woolworth sit-ins, an epicenter of the civil rights movement. I grew up poor as the ninth of 10 children in a home marred by alcoholism, but I had a mother who was a strong woman of faith, and she sustained us. She was also a woman who lived through the terribleness of Jim Crow and with its first hand, the sacrifices made by those to ensure that black voices would be heard in government. I know right now she is up in heaven smiling as I, she sees her son here sitting in this committee hearing. But today I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about voter discrimination and election integrity. The subject of this hearing is the evolving landscape of voter discrimination. And it certainly has throughout our nation's history. Let me say that I am very proud of the history in this nation of my people. My people were put in the belly of ships bound in chains and endured the middle passage. My people were whipped, beaten, and sold as, pro as property during slavery. During Reconstruction and throughout Jim Crow, black people were intimidated, harassed, and even killed to keep them from having a voice in government. Symbols like chains, nooses, and burnt crosses are not just symbols of death. They are symbols of forced and coerced silence. The sacrifices of our ancestors, so I could have the opportunity to become the first black lieutenant governor of my state, to see a black man sit in the White House for two terms, and for millions of us to be leaders in business, athletics, government, and culture, add up to an incredible story of victory. But today, we hear Georgia law being compared to Jim Crow, that black voices are being silenced, and that black voices are being kept out. How? By bullets? By bombs? By nooses? No, by requiring a free ID to secure the vote. Let me say that again, by requiring a free ID to secure the vote. How absolutely preposterous. Am I to believe that black Americans who have overcome the atrocities of slavery who were victorious in the civil rights movement and now sit in the highest levels of this government cannot figure out how to get a free ID to secure their votes. That they need to be coddled by politicians because they don't think we can figure out how to make our voices heard. Are you kidding me? The notion that black people must be protected from a free ID to secure their votes is not just insane, it is insulting. Just a few days ago, excuse me, uh, uh, and let me tell you something about this. This is, doesn't have anything to do with justice. This has everything to do with power. Just a few days ago, Vice the vice president went to the very place that I mentioned, the Woolworth counter in Greensboro. But you know who wasn't there? You know who wasn't invited? My good friend Clarence Henderson, who is a civil rights icon. He sat at that counter and endured the suffering and pain to make sure that black voices were heard. And why was he left out? Because he's of a different political persuasion. You might ask why this is so, and I'll tell you plainly. The goal of some individuals in government is not to hear the voices of black Americans at all. It's to hear the voices that fit their narratives and ultimately help keep power with one group. And that's what this all is all about, it's about power. Just look at H.R. 1. It's despicable. The entire thing is designed to keep one party in power and ensure they stay there indefinitely. And how do they plan to do that? By taking away the rights of states given by the Constitution to govern their own elections, to mandate a wish list, a partisan, a partisan wish list that comes down from that federal government. Some of these items include using government dollars to fund campaigns in order to give an advantage to one party. Mandating that felons are allowed to vote, including illegal immigrants on voter rolls, and of course, trying to ban states from having voter ID. The last thing I'll say is this. Many people know that I'm a strong proponent of the Second Amendment, and I always will be. I believe that the right to keep and bear arms should always be available to law-abiding citizens. 
but the first line of defense in maintaining the integrity of the Second Amendment is having an ID to show and requiring that ID when you purchase that firearm. In the same way, I believe that voter ID is our first line of defense for protecting the integrity of the right to vote. And that's what this should be about. It should be about integrity, not power. Thank you.